Hi, we're Ben, Emily, and this is Alan. For the last two years, we've been traveling the UK waterways in our tiny floating home. We've seen many beautiful places, been through a lot of locks, and cruised through and over some amazing feats of engineering along the way. Join us for the ups and downs, mainly ups, of life aboard our narrowboat home. So it's Friday and we're leaving Hillmorton at last. We had a lovely time at the little cafe here at Hillmorton Locks yesterday with our friends. And yeah, we've been here probably maybe about a week, I think. But it's time for us to move. It's quarter past seven, but we've heard that it's going to be busy today. I think there's something going on nearby. It's also a bank holiday, so we thought... Let's try and move before it gets super busy. So we're off right now. What an early getaway for us, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> such a perfect day for it. It's super nice. We're just gonna go a few miles to a village called Willoughby. There's some park in there and it's hopefully a nice quiet spot. We're going past a place called Barbie Marina. Yeah, I don't know if Ken's gonna be there. That's where all the boats of called Ken are built. <laughs> I grow within these patterns upon my soul. Time machine. I watch the morning sunlight This is what it's all about, isn't it, Benny? Oh yeah. Early morning cruises in the spring sunshine. So nice. This dog is having the best day ever. I guess it's from one of the boats. Having a nice time. Hey. <laughs> He's so happy. <laughs> Where are you from? Come on then. Come on then. Good spot, isn't it? Yeah, mission complete. Right, now to Where's work. the play? Where's the bridge though? We're off again. We realised that we're actually nowhere near the bridge. I thought we were moored right, I thought we'd stop near the bridge, but we haven't. Because there's parking there for the van. So we've just got another few minutes to go. I'm gonna miss that little dog though, he was so cute. Yeah. What a cute little guy. Okay, this is our new spot. And the bridge is just round there. Where we can park the van. But now it's work time, so. That's me for the rest of the day. <laughs> it's got really, really busy. There's like a boat going past every minute, isn't there? Yeah. We definitely... We moved early. It was a good call. For sure. Wow. So, as you may or may not know, we have quite a few ongoing boat jobs. Today, I'm going to upgrade our kitchen shelves from a slightly rickety pallet situation to a slightly more fancy ply niceness. Situation. Yeah. <laughs> anchor Solics, formerly known as Anchor, have sent us their F1200 portable power station to review. So we're gonna get that involved in all the jobs that we're doing today. 
We've already been using it to charge our laptops, run our washing machine, our blender, charge the power tools, and I've also been plugging my acoustic amplifier into it, which has been great fun. The Ankasolix is powered by long-lasting Life PO4 batteries that will last for 3,000 charge cycles, equivalent to 10 years use. It also has a nice big clear screen that shows the percentage of power left and also how long it will last powering the appliance that's plugged in. So now, we're gonna take it outside and see if it can handle running the jigsaw and the sander at the same time while me and Emily make these shells. Alan seems to like the new Ankasolix. <laughs> what are yeah. you doing? Yeah. We've gone with ply again because that's Benny's new favourite wood. And um, I'm gonna do lots of sanding on it so it makes it look real nice. How are you getting on, Benny? Yeah, we're getting there. Drawing some nice pictures on this. Yeah, you're doing the sides now. Yeah. I've nearly done the uh, sanding, and the let's have a look at how the anchor's doing. So I've done a lot of sanding. By the way, the screen doesn't actually flicker in real life. It's just uh, the way my camera's picking it up. It's only used four percent of the battery. I'm done. Fair bit of cutting and sanding. Great! Okay, so it's about to start raining. We need to pack up fast. <laughs> the uh, anchor solace is still only on 93% and we've sanded everything now and cut everything. So yeah, it's working all right, isn't it? It's brilliant. Looking good. Look at these. Overall, the Anchor Solix has worked well for us and we're using it daily on the boat. They are offering some great benefits if you become a member. Check the details in the description. Hey everyone, it's seven o'clock in the morning and we're having a bit of a earlier start today. We're going to get water from Braunston Junction, but we're going to set off early because it's pretty busy around here. So, going to get Emily up in a minute and start getting things ready to go. You ready to get up, Emily? Oh, morning. No. <laughs> Come on then. It's time. Is it? Yeah. What time is it? Seven. Okay. We're meant to be at the water point. <laughs> Ten minutes ago. Why? Okay, I'll get up. I'm up. It's quarter past seven. It's quite early, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so we have a change of plan again. <laughs> We're calling it the big detour. It is a come, bit of a detour. Come here, Benny. Let's explain it together. Also, we've completely run out of water, so we need to. Um, we have to move, even though it's the first vaguely rainy day in about a month, it seems. So yeah, we need to get water and we're going to get that from Braunston. I've already explained this while you were asleep. Ah. What have you explained? Just that. Have you explained the uh, big detour? No, I didn't go into all those confidential details. <laughs> right, where do we begin? It's quite a story. As you know, we're supposed to be going down to the K&A, obviously via the Oxford Canal. However, we have decided that we want to two-pack our boat. So every few years you take the boat out of the water and you do what's called blacking, so you paint like bitumen on the, on the hull to keep it good. But two-pack is something that will last a lot, lot longer, maybe like even 15 years. 
So we've decided to do that. We need a little bit of welding doing as well. So we're at Bronston Junction. We're going to go up the Grand Union. We're going to go through Leicester. We're going to go up the River Saw. We're going to go to Red Hill Marina, where our friends have had their boat two packed. And a great job has happened. So we're going to do the same before we get ridiculously far away. Although we are we're very far, far away. away. <laughs> Only about 65 locks. Just so it's just a... Uh... Uh, Bit of a detour. It's quite a big bit detour. Of a tangent. It's going to take us three weeks, I think. Or a month. And then we're going to turn around again, probably, and come back down again, and then do the Oxford, and then get onto the Kennet and Avon. You best not tell me it's a twenty-minute drive, or a month in a boat. It is. It's like. No, it's I about an hour or something. I think it's it? about an hour and a half drive, but three weeks to a month in a boat. We were we'll actually... See. We'll see how much progress we actually make. Yeah, we? we just want to get the work done first because we are keen on getting to the Kennet and Avon. We've heard good things. Um, so, yeah, that's the plan. Just a little three-week detour, isn't it, Benny? Just a little one. Well, I guess six or two months if you include the way back. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway. anyway, that well, starts best today. Start, then. Starts today, and it starts with Braunston Tunnel and quite a few locks as well, I think, and possibly another tunnel. Yeah, it's going to be quite a lot of locks on this stretch, isn't there? Mm. So yeah, let's get going. Right, best have some breakfast. Yeah, I feel like I didn't really explain what two pack is just then. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. It's just different to bitumen, and like I say, it does last a lot, lot longer. However, we actually blacked our boat the last time it was out of the water, which was about nearly two years ago. But at Red Hill Marina, they do it for you. So what they'll do is they'll grip blast the boat and they do the base plate as well, which I think not many places do. And then they spray the two pack on. So yeah, it's pretty exciting. There was something else we haven't told you, which was that we were thinking of selling the boat, not to not live on a boat, but to get a bigger one. We feel, we felt like we, we needed a bit more space, but we love this boat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change it a little bit so that it works a bit better. Um, yeah, just, just a few bits and bobs here and there just to make it a little bit more spacious, but we're not gonna sell it because we love her too much. And that's why we've decided to do the two pack because it should last us a very, very long time. So yeah, there you go. There's a little bit more info about it. It's a healthy amount of honey there. It's a square. <laughs> All right, should we go then? How do you, Becky? Go. Hi, ducklings. Thank you. Thanks for being our cute little neighbours. Hi. I think we need to move these guys. They're getting a bit <laughs> in the way. In the way. They're off. They're seeing us off. Bye. Right, we're about here. <coughs> This is where the water point is, so that's where we're going to fill up. This is the way we were supposed to be going, but we're actually going to be going this way to start our big detour. He's done it. <laughs> Cleaning my brewing bucket. You know what that means, guys. There's a brew on the way. <laughs> gonna brew some beer. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. <laughs> Right, we've filled up with water. Benny's gone back to get the van because one of our subscribers offered to give us a lift. Ah, there's Benny. 
I think he's realised that he's got time to go on the boat. <laughs> yeah! Wow, look, this is good, isn't it? Good timing. I'm back. Yay! <sighs> Thanks to that nice guy for giving you a lift. That's so nice, huh? Oh, I ran faster than I thought then. I don't know if you need to push off the front now. I don't know what Thanks for the lift. Can you, I'm can a you bit flustered. Okay, they... I'm going to push off. So depending on how far we go today, we've got at least six locks. We've got quite a long tunnel, Bronston Tunnel. It's 2,042 yards. Um, and then we'll be turning onto the Grand Union Leicester section because we're just on the Grand Union main line at the moment. I think there's quite a lot of locks on this bit that we're going to be doing. And a few, uh, what are they called? Staircase, staircase locks. We'll see. So really good timing, there's another boat that's just set off behind us that wants to go up the locks as well. And these are wide locks so it just makes it so much easier and better if there's two lock two boats in the lock. So yeah, good good timing, huh? Yeah, I think. So that's lock one of six. It's so cold today, I cannot believe how different the weather is. We've been so hot on the boat recently. So it's nice to do the locks to warm up again. <laughs> I've forgotten what these wide locks are like. It's pretty hard work, but it's uh, a lot easier because we're sharing. We're sharing with a lovely family on their hire boat holiday. I think we've done four. I think that's the fourth one. So I'm just going to get the fifth one ready. Right, this is the last lock and then we've got the tunnel, but we need to pull over for a sec because we need to put our light on because we still don't have one. That's our locks then. That's the locks. For a while. We're just gonna stop here for a minute just to get some lunch, aren't we? Yeah, well, it might be like brunch. Alan's off. We haven't seen Y beams for so long, so they just look absolutely humongous to us. Looks like someone's gone and stretched a normal one. They've just gone, ooh! Yeah. Uh, right, yeah, it. brunch time and then we'll do the tunnel. Okay, I've had a bit of a snack and a coffee. Time to get through that tunnel. 40 minutes of pitch black wonder. <laughs> So the difference between this tunnel and all the other tunnels that we've done so far is that two boats can go through, two narrow boats can go through at the same time, as in, diff you know, opposite directions. <laughs> Which makes me quite nervous because it still seems narrow in there. But anyway, the light is on, we're ready to go in. I think it's gonna be fine.
that was a wallet. I think that's the worst hit we've ever had. <laughs> it's knocked my plant pot off. Oh my god. You've not lost anything have you? No. That's insane. Wow, wow. Oh my god. It's about tunnels. You don't like tunnels, do you? I that prefer was it. Such a hard I hit. prefer the upper world. Oh my god. I need to go and have a look at them. I'm going to go spawn out. They hit the front of us. Oh, look, look, look down the side. This looks dusty. I can't see the impact. There's loads of boats coming now, isn't there? Yeah, that was good. That was we lucky. were lucky. Apart from the fact that we just got absolutely smashed in. Yeah. yeah, the guy, I guess, I don't know, he, he just didn't have his nose to the right, did he? And he, he had a big up. old boat, but it was like a big, heavy old boat. It absolutely cracked us, didn't it? Yeah, I'm going to go and have a look at the boat, our boat, see what's happening. Hey. So, Alan's peacefully sleeping in here, but everything has fallen off everywhere when we got hit just then. That was actually a really big wallop. Benny's guitar was on the floor, everything was on the floor, I picked a few things up. And we've got quite a bad bosh on the side of the boat, but oh well. I don't think they really, they obviously didn't mean to. Um, yeah, it's just hard. It was just unfortunate, like we were so lucky for the whole of that tunnel journey that nothing was coming through. There is actually really good parking for the van. Excuse me, I've got hiccups. Just near this bridge. I don't know. I think we're gonna have lunch and see how we feel. I feel like we should, excuse me, go a bit further today. Cause we haven't really gone that far. Uh, we're not actually even on the Grand Union Leicester section yet. Oh, excuse me. Um, so yeah, let's have some lunch, see how we go. See how we feel. How are you doing, Alan? Oh, I see. She's having the best time ever. Okay, we've decided to stay here because we're both really tired for some reason. We did set off really early. We set off at like eight and yeah. it's like two now, so. It's been a day of it really. Yeah, um, we've, we've had lunch, but I'm gonna cycle back and get the van. It's definitely my turn. Um, but it's only four miles, so it should take me about it says 20, minutes. yeah, it says 20 minutes, but it'll definitely be more like it's 40. It's a hill involved. Yeah, so that tunnel we went through, I've got to go over it. So the hill that the tunnel went through. So that's what I'm going to do now. Right, I'm going to go. See okay. you later. Right, see you in a bit. <laughs> it's really cold, so I put a blanket on it. Right, I'm back at the tunnel. I can see there's a path that goes up. So let's hope it's not too steep. I feel like I'm pushing this bike for some other way. So I'm pretty sure that's one of the air vents for the tunnel that we saw the holes that go up into the into the roof. Here we are. Can you hear that? Someone's singing in there. It's very ghostly though. back on the towpath. So I don't think it's very far now. Benny got a lift earlier with uh, one of our subscribers, which was really lovely. 
back to the van while I was filling up with water. So he put the van near Bronston Marina. So I've got to go find the van. I'm not exactly sure where it is. Right, this should be interesting. Oh my god. That wasn't ideal. Right. <laughs> Nearly there. Found the van. There it is. Now how do I get to it? Okay, we're back. I'm back. Also, so we've realised that when that boat hit us earlier, it was such a big bosh, wasn't it? It really got yeah. us. It was a big work boat and the bows on those are really high. Um, what so I thought... It's quite like, if you if you look at where our bow is there, like the end bit, there, theirs would there's come like up, up to here. like here and that's what a lot of these boats are like and you see them going past your window and i really scary. Thought, if they were driving that wrong, they could just drive straight through, through your window. The window yeah. So what I thought was a massive scratch down the boat isn't, it's just like mud from their boat, but it's kind of worse in a way because we could have just repainted that because that's just with the black. But what's actually happened is they hit our cratch cover and ripped it. It's not huge, but it's just really annoying because obviously we've only had it for a year and it's all really dent, it, you can't see, but it's really chipped there. So That's yeah, fun. it's that, okay. We this could... is the thing, like this is our, our nice kind of still new crash cover. A dirty <laughs> hole in it now. So, pretty annoying. Yeah. And they didn't even say sorry, did they, we realised? No, I, I said, I said, are you alright to yeah. them? They didn't even acknowledge yeah. that they have done it. I'm surprised you didn't say sorry. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's the sort of thing I'd normally do. Right, well I think it's time to feed the cat, tidy the boat. What are you sat there doing? <laughs> I'm absolutely fine. Just hanging out with the uh, air purifier. That thing's great, isn't it? It stopped you from sneezing. That's what we should call the boat. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> this thing. We're not. We're not sponsored by Philips or anything, but um, yeah, it's it's pretty amazing, isn't it? Like yeah. you, it's on you an normally... arrow boat. Nobody tells you this. There's a lot of dust involved. Maybe somebody did tell you that, but now I'm telling you. <laughs> Between the wood burner, what else causes it? The cat box. Yeah, the cat litter, uh, just dust. You just get dust everywhere and it, you notice it in winter. And we hoover. I have quite sensitive sinuses to it. Yeah. We hoover like twice we a day, don't we? We hoover all the time and it just. But this air purifier. He's, he's, he's pretty angry at the moment, he's on red. But yeah, we have it in the bed. No, we don't. We have it in the bedroom. <laughs> we don't put it in the bed with us. And that's that's one boundary we won't pass. Why are you just sat here? Oh, because were you playing guitar? Yeah, it's just I can sit and play when it doesn't bang into anything. Oh, okay. Check out this curry, guys, and we've got kimchi. My <laughs> mouth's watering. Kimchi mushrooms. That's right. I put some kimchi sauce on the mushrooms. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. I think we're going to just yeah, eat this, aren't it's we? It's okay. Chickpea, spinach, broccoli. Courgette. Curry. So good. Thank you. Alan's just chilling. Um, I think we're going to eat this, aren't we? And just. Just take chill it out. easy, yeah. Take it easy. See you tomorrow, guys. rehearsing for a gig that I've got this Sunday in Manchester. But that'll have been about three weeks or a yes, month ago when this video weeks. comes so out. So don't turn up on your Sunday because <laughs> it's already happened I'm afraid. do anything to be on someone's lap. You both look really uncomfortable. 
We're fine, aren't we, Alan? We're really comfy. Oh, don't wobble her. Oh, it started a purring. I know. You're a funny cat, aren't you? Hey everyone, so today the sun's come out, it's been a lovely day and it's inspired me to finally do something very exciting which I've been waiting a while to do which is to brew some beer. It's something that I used to do quite a lot but I haven't done as much on the boat although I have done it a few times. So if you look here in this big pan there's some water that I'm bringing to the boil, also making dinner. And when it's come to the boil I'm going to stick in barley and that's to get it out and make a mix and then I've got some hops in the freezer to add into it so I'll show you a bit of what I'm doing as I go along so here's pale malt marisotta so I'm going to make a barley mix in the cold before I add it in oh yeah I'm putting 100 grams of wheat malt just 50 grams of the crystal malt this is darker stuff so it can really quickly affect the kind of beer you make And he's making pasta while he's brewing his beer. Also, while you're on, what I'm doing, I'm not actually bringing it to the boil, I'm just bringing it to um, like 65 degrees and you steep it at that temperature. So I've brought this water up to 70 degrees. Now I'm going to soak the barley in. Well, it's been about a year since I've done this, so I'm trying to refresh my mind. You did write it all down, didn't you? Yeah, I've just had a look at that, but there's a few vital things I never wrote down. Excellent. <laughs> um, one of them is, I think I ended up soaking this overnight just to get the most sugars out of it. Right, so that's, what's that, that's like one, 1.6 kilos of barley. Do I put more in? Shall we just get some more in, guys? What do you think? Yeah? All right. Go on, roughly half of it. As well. Yeah, it's Marisotta barley. Malted barley. I think Alan wants her dinner. No, she's just interested in part of your beer. Oh, okay. The difficult thing with doing a beer brewing video is it actually takes a month to make one video. Like now, we'll do this, then we'll boil it tomorrow with hops, and then we'll put it in a bucket for a week, and then we'll dry hop it, leave it for another week, and then we'll bottle it, and then we have to leave it for at least two weeks. At least, ideally a month. We need to sterilise the bucket as well. Foamy. So yeah, it's pretty foam actually. Oh my gosh, yeah. That's what it this is good. about. It smells like really, really intense Ovaltine. Yeah, it's or like, it's like kind of biscuity. Oh, it's, yeah, it's just, it so it's a good. great smell. Okay, so it's two hours later. I've decided that it is soaked enough. I don't leave it to soak overnight. I just had to remember what I did. So it's all been soaking for two hours at about 60 odd degrees. That looks heavy. Yeah, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pour it through this bag, which is called a sparge bag. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Which will leave just oh the my. liquid. Whoa! <laughs> I'm glad that worked out. It gets a bit slappy now. Oh. <laughs> wow, it's still really hot, isn't it? Yeah. I guess because it's such a lot of liquid, it keeps the heat, doesn't it? Yeah, the density of the So you just, barley. that's it? You you left it in for that long and that's it? Yeah. Huh. Because I think if you leave it in too long, it just goes weird. I did do it, I, I remember now, I did it once before where I left it in overnight to soak. And I made the beer and it was fine. Give me a bad hangover. Ah. I think there's probably a reason you only do it for a few hours. <laughs> I'll get rid of that soaked barley, then with the liquid we're going to boil that to make the beer. Well this is now called the wort actually, and I'm passing it back through the You can't really see it, it's so dark, barley. I'm afraid. And, uh, oh, wow. Does, it doesn't clear out until it's like fermented and it, it's become alcoholic and stuff. Yeah. Lovely. Okay, so the wort has been brewing for 90 minutes now, so I'm going to add in some hops. What's called the flame out. Wow, it looks pretty soupy, doesn't it? 
so don't worry about that we're going to pass it through muslin to get rid of all the bits and then it clears out as it begins to ferment Okay, any? so we're later on in the day. Oh, dinner. We boiled the wort <laughs> for an hour and then we put the hops in at the end, if you remember. So wort is just what you call like the brew as it's being made. So it's not beer yet. It's it's a wort, which is just like the barley liquid. You know, here it is. Looks delicious. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm going to try and pour it carefully through this muslin. DIY go. Oh, wow, it's really holding on. Oh, there will be the hops, so yes, there will be. Yeah, here they come. Oh, it smells so good. Yeah. I don't like beer, but that smells lovely. It doesn't smell like beer, though. It's, no, it smells it's like, like really, <laughs> it's really sweet, flowery kind of smell, I guess. Mm. So yeah, so that's in there now. I'm going to let it cool a bit more and then add the yeast and then we'll leave it for a week. What fun to be had. It's quite late, by the way, I'm pretty tired. This is quite a few hours later, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's now at like a room ambient temperature. So I've opened the yeast. I'm just going to sprinkle like half the packet over it. What are you using? That's what? So it's called Mangrove Jacks Hophead Ale Yeast. They do loads of different yeasts. I just picked this one. <laughs> I'm making like a pale ale. I, I've, I haven't actually said that yet. I'm just making a hoppy pale ale. <laughs> do your magic. Okay, <laughs> that's how we make it mega. Can't wait till we're drinking it. Be like no time. We? Oh, I don't drink beer. Yeah, I mean, I don't drink. who's watching, we're gonna have a drink, aren't we guys? Right, Somehow. is it time for bed? We're so tired. Also, I haven't measured it for strength because it's, that's not really gonna make a difference to me how strong it is. <laughs> but I do know how to measure the strength. Normally you use your funny stick yeah. thing, don't you? What's it called? Hydrometer. But it's just, I don't know, it's just, it's more things to wash and stuff. So for this <laughs> first one, I'm just, I'm just doing it and seeing how it goes. Maybe I'll measure the next one. Right, so now how long is that in there for then? A week. And then we're going to dry hop it, which means we add more hops after a week. So we get it, make it really tangy. Thinking about calling it Samurai Wedding Night. Then he's that got good name some, for a beer? Some strange beer names. I just feel like... What, what, what were your old names? You had... Well, I had uh, Sovereign Being, Autumnal Slap. Uh, I had uh, Grapefruit Kamikaze. Oh, that was my dad's favourite, wasn't it? Yeah, he loved that. I had mountains of hops. You would not be surprised to hear. It was quite hard to drink. It was a bit like... Because you get like bitter ratings for beer. Off the scale? Yeah, it was off the scale. <laughs> Inedible. Well, can you say inedible for something you drink? In drink. Undrinkable. Undrinkable. But it was it was good. It just didn't taste like any beer you'd ever had. Ask Dave when he gets back from Spain. He'll tell you. Okay, so where's that gonna live then? I just fall outside the fridge. Yeah. You're kidding, aren't you? Right. Right. I'm really tired. You look really tired. Let's go. Night, guys. Night. Thanks so much for watching, and a special thanks to everyone who bought us a coffee this week, and of course to our patrons as always. Catch us next week when we continue our big detour up the Leicester section of the Grand Union Canal. Bye!